Hello, everyone. Welcome back to St. Louis Teens. Today, we are here with Satvik Sethi, who is the founder of Runaway App, providing workshops, in-person meetings, and a positivity zone to improve one's mental health. Satvik, you are a Young Citizen Entrepreneur nominee and were selected for the 25 Under 25 Social Entrepreneurs. Congratulations, and thank you for your phenomenal service to our youth. Thank you, and thank you so much for having me. Satvik, thank you so much for being here with us today. Can you tell us a little bit more about yourself and what inspired you to start Runaway App? Sure. So I'm Satvik Sethi. I'm 22 years old, and I'm a mental health activist, mental health advocate, as well as um, a product manager at MasterCard. And some of the work that I do for Runaway specifically revolves around just promoting mental health awareness, providing resources for people who have mental health challenges, and advocating at a global stage for countries and organizations to invest more towards mental health. And how I got started with my journey was owing to my experiences with mental health in middle school. It was a time when myself and a lot of my friends around me were dealing with mental health problems. And I always was someone who my friends felt comfortable sharing their problems with. At the same time, I also started going online on Instagram and finding people who, were, who had mental health problems and who were using the platform to reach out for help and just started talking to them. And over the course of the past few years, I've spoken to over 450 people on Instagram, complete strangers that I reached out to. And eventually when I came to college four years ago, it just gave me the inspiration to start something where I could bring in other people to help me and we could reach more people. And that's really how Runaway came to be. And Satvik, your, your vision is to make the world a happier place for all of us. How are you accomplishing this goal? Sure. So like I said, for me, making the world happier is not just something that applies to my work with mental health, but I've realized that this is my purpose and it's something that I actively work towards every single day, whether it's a small task, like, you know, you see someone who's homeless on the street and if I'm going to pick up food for myself, I'll also make a small order to give to the person outside. Um, it's checking in on your friends and being there for them. But at the same time, on a larger scale, making the world happier for me has meant creating things like Runaway or my latest venture, Kaizen, that provides free education for anyone in need, or advocating at the United Nations General Assembly for better services for the youth of countries around the world. And your Runaway app does incredible things, and we're so thankful for the wonderful work that you have been able to do and Runaway app has been able to do. If you had to sort of pick one part, and I know this can be difficult, but which part would you pick that would be your sort of favorite part of Runaway app? Sure. So I think there's obviously there's, you know, a lot to pick from, but I think for me personally, it's just the conversations that we've been able to open up around mental health because so I grew up in India and I only came to the United States four years ago for undergrad. And so I've got a really good first-hand look at all the mental health stigma that exists in India, in the United States, and pretty much all around the world. And I think through Runaway, one of our biggest goals was to break some of that stigma down by just either posting educational content on our social media platforms, talking to our friends and partnering with organizations that can provide resources. Even my own parents who hated the idea initially that I was working in the mental health space and talking to people with mental health problems have now completely come around to it and you know they've become some of my biggest supporters they're always more open about their own mental health and i think that's really my favorite aspect is just letting people be more vulnerable and you know of all the people that you have been able to affect so positively can you share with us some of the success stories of the program and the people that you're able to work with yeah absolutely so i think my favorite success story is still going to be the very first person and this was you know even before runaway started this was the first person i ever found online completely accidentally on instagram and she was at the time a 15 year old girl from sweden and i just left a comment on her post saying hey if you need someone to talk to i'm there for you and ended up having a really nice conversation learning about her passions her family her hobbies and you know what what, what were her ambitions for the future 
And she was going through so much, but at the same time, I tried to instill in her a sense of optimism and positivity to just keep going through it. And obviously, eventually, we lost touch. But just a few years ago, she actually messaged me out of nowhere saying she was doing really well. She graduated from university and she got a job as a photographer, which was like her dream job. And she attributed just being there and making it to me being there for her one night. And that really, at the time, because Runaway was, you know, still picking up and I was still trying to find the motivation, put the pieces together. And so just hearing that and seeing that message at the right time just really validated the work that we were doing. It's so wonderful that you were able to have that positive effect on one person and even just, you know, one night of talking. And I think it, it serves as a good example for other people who may be wondering what they can do for others to just simply talk and, you know, be there for someone, even if it's just for a short period of time. Absolutely. And I want to transition over now to the pandemic. And with the onset of the pandemic, how has life changed for your organization and the work that you're able to do? So for us, this pandemic, for me personally, as privileged as that sounds, I've enjoyed the amount of free time that I've had because I'm not commuting anywhere. There's no social events that I need to attend. So it's given me a lot of time personally to work more on Runaway, work on my other social venture, Kaizen. And also just, you know, it's given me a really good opportunity to reconnect with people I hadn't spoken to in such a long time, just whether we're FaceTiming or we're texting each other. So it's, it's been really nice from that aspect. Looking at Runaway specifically, obviously, you know, being at home the entire day, feeling isolated, things like that can definitely impact your mental health negatively. And so for us at this time, what we've been trying to do is remind people, one, that they're not alone, that, you know, things like social distancing aren't really asking you to be socially distant, but just physically distant, and that you still have all these virtual tools available to connect with the people you love and care about. Um, We've been trying to post more educational content Uh, on our social media platforms. I've been working on some partnerships that can provide free resources for our community, as well as our mobile app is almost ready, which is really exciting because it will let people come online and talk to our student volunteers one-on-one anonymously about their mental health problems, as well as access all kinds of mental health crisis resources, educational resources, and free resources from our partners. And there has been a lot of discussion and concern about the mental health effects of this pandemic. What has been your experience in that field so far? Yeah, so for me, as I said, you know, there's definitely a lot of mental health impact from this pandemic and just the overall feeling of isolation. But I think it's So I actually worked on research for this topic specifically with the Wellcome Trust UK and UNICEF. Um, And what we found was that there's a lot of negative effects, obviously, which are, you know, they're blatantly obvious. But at the same time, there's a lot of positive things that have come out as a result. A lot of people have been trying out different kinds of therapy. So my own friends, you know, they've started going to virtual therapy. Um, They've opened up about their own mental health. Again, as I said, a lot of people have been socializing virtually, um, reaching out to each other for help. Also, you know, coinciding with the Black Lives Matter movement that's going on in the United States has given a lot of people something to work towards and a common purpose to unite us. So with, like with everything, you know, there's always the good and bad, but I think a lot of people are trying to focus on the good side as much as they can. And that's something that I'm personally working towards is just to keep reminding people that despite where we are today, despite what's going on, there's still a bright side. And so we're stuck in this for God knows how long, but at least let's try to come together to make the best of it. And what are your top three measures that teens can take to keep themselves, to keep themselves mentally healthy during these times of physical isolation and separation and the pandemic? Great question. So I think the first thing I always emphasize and something that we almost always tend to skip is self-indulgence. Parks and Rec, most famous dialogue is treat yourself. And I will always stand by it because I think especially in these times, 
just do the things you love and do the things that make you happy. So, and that looks different from, for everyone. So for you, it could be just reading a book, watching your favorite movie, eating your favorite foods, listening to some music, or even doing nothing at all. Sometimes it's just good to just lay in your bed, stare at the ceiling and just relax and unwind. So that's definitely my first tip. Uh, the second one is to check in on others. So, you know, just sending a message like, hey, thought of you, how are you doing today? Or, hey, just checking in, letting you know I'm always here for you. The small, small messages like that can not only remind your friends that you're there for them if they're feeling lonely, but at the same time, it also instills in you this idea that you're there for someone else and that itself brings you a lot of positivity. And finally, I just say take breaks. This is the most stressful time any of us have ever encountered or ever gone through. And I think we're, obviously everyone has a lot of things going on. We're trying to juggle whether it's virtual classes or virtual work. And it's, it's a very new setting and environment for us. There's obviously a lot of work piling up on everyone's plates, but I think at the same time, it's important to recognize that it's okay to take a break and it's okay to just kind of put work aside, even if it's for 30 minutes an hour to just relax. Um, again, you know, in that time that you relax and do what you love doing, um, go out for walks if there's like a public park around you, put on your mask and just put on your shoes and just go walk for a bit, get some fresh air. Um, but taking those breaks has been, I know for me personally, it's been so, so important with the schedule that I have that I've, I keep trying to build in as many breaks as I can. But yeah, those are, those are my three top lessons that I follow myself every day. And I know for a fact that it's going to help others as well. I think that advice is invaluable and very powerful. I, I would ask Sathvik now, what is your message for teens who are aspiring to become innovators and leaders like yourself? Great question again. So I always tell people that, you know, I, for the longest time, always wanted to be an entrepreneur, but I kept like, coming up with these ideas that I truly wasn't invested in and that I wasn't really passionate about. It was, I was trying to work on projects because I thought they'd make me a lot of money or because they'd bring me fame, things like that. But over time I realized that that's really not why you do entrepreneurship or why you innovate. So my biggest piece of advice is going to be find what you're passionate about and what you're passionate about has to be something that forces you to get out of bed in the morning because you just can't stay away from it and you want to get started with working on it as soon as you can. So once you once you found that passion, everything else is going to come so easily. And my second piece of advice for that is something that I heard at a conference, which was leap first, think later. And that's been such a crucial piece of advice for me at many junctures in my life, because I think a lot of times, especially as students, we keep doubting ourselves and we keep doubting our abilities. We wait forever sometimes because we think we're not ready yet. But the truth is no one is ready. And entrepreneurship is not just something that you can perfect right before you start. So leap first, think later just means that if you have something you're passionate about, start to start working on it, you know, announce it to social media. That's how I started Runaway even before I had any clue what I was going to do. I just posted on my Facebook, say, hey, I'm starting Runaway. And then now because I'd announced it, I had to figure everything else out on the fly. And that's fine. That's really what entrepreneurship is all about. It's just that constant learning and constantly evolving and bettering yourself and in the process, bettering what you're working on. Sadvik, thank you so much for your amazing service to our youth in need and to our country. And thank you so much for your time today and answering all of our questions. Thank you so much for having me again.